I want to talk to you tonight about prayer and uh, effective praying. Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit be upon us and anoint us. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to start with this. Christ was never random in anything he said or he did. Never random. Everything he said and did was according to the will of his Father. He heard what his father said, he said it, saw what his father's doing, and he did it. Never random. How much of what we're doing is random? Now, the wisdom of God is to pray his will. His will. Prayer is so needed, but so ineffective. I mean, let me ask you, how many of your prayers are answered? Our prayers are mostly need-based. Prayer, worship is need-based. I, I need to worship so I get something out of it from God in my worship. It's about us instead of Him. Sermons, need-based. Church is what they advertise, what they promote, what they do. It's need-based. In fact, um, one of the major things, principles they say is find a need in the community and meet it. Gifts, need-based. Even the gifts of the Spirit are need-based. What we say, what do we need by need, what do we mean by need-based? We mean the needs of man. It's all about the needs of man, if you can see that. It's not about what God wants, but what man wants. Not what about God needs, it's what we need. Human praying, human will, human opinion, human compassion, human needs, all ends in the soul. In the soul. We've talked about uh, in Hebrews 4, 12, he said the, the word of God divides between the soul and the spirit. We have to know what soul and what is spirit. We have to know that. If we don't know that, we're good way off somewhere. On things we you know we, we want the Lord gave me this a, few, a little while ago we want God to divide the waters and give us deliverance from our problems but he wants to divide between the soul and the spirit that's what he wants but what are we oh God you see this this Egyptian army you see these problems divide the waters for me so I can go pass through and then you Close it back in on my problems, and so uh, that's our. That's what we're really uh, focused on for the most part. Now, all this human praying ends in the soul. It can only end in what it begins in. What it begins in. God seldom answers. Why? He will not be manipulated or bargained with. By our soulish prayers, our binding, bind the devil, bind the devil, go in the devil's camp, take back what he stole from me. They've never got any of it anyway. They just sing that song. Our weeping, our fasting. I know a, a dear brother, pastor, and his wife was sick, and he fasted and fasted, and, and she died. And he was very distraught over it. But he never said he prayed for God's will. I'm going to tell you something now. Your will and my will is pretty strong. And we really want what we want. Is that right? We want what we want. And God better do it. And Lord, if you do it, I'll testify and I'll tell how great you are. We are to pray, Father, your kingdom come in them. Who are you praying for? Pray for the will of God, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the government of God. He said, our Father, Jesus said, pray, our Father who is in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your, your kingdom, your government, your will be done, praise God, in earth as it is in heaven. And it's very unlikely that my will and your will is being done in heaven. I'm going to help you now. I'm not trying to be too hard, but I want to help us to see this. Your kid, what should we pray for others? Well, Lord, make them do this, make them do that. But 
uh, or Lord, uh, give them this, give them that. Our prayer should be your kingdom come in them. Your kingdom, your government come in them. That's what we should pray. Because listen, God can bless you out of your socks all your life and still you can split hell wide open. You know that? Or your family, or your loved ones you're praying for. I just want to say, God, give them a job. God, get them out of prison. God, give them a wife. God, give them a you know, house. God, give them, give them, give them. What, what do they really need? They need God. They need God. Your kingdom come in them. Christ be formed in them. That's what we should pray. We need to pray for the absolute restriction of our soul. The absolute restriction of our soul. The division between the soul and the spirit. Wisdom and understanding is a situation. But we have to be careful what we pray for. Instead of praying for our wisdom and understanding, let us pray rather that the will of God be done and that He keep our soul under His hand. He keep our soul under His hand. Now, soul, self, that's what we're talking about. That we not move into presumption Presuming that we know what God wants and what God ought to do and how God ought to do it. We're so full of presumption. Am I only talking about myself? <laughs> We're so full of presumption. We presume to know what God wants and we... what what? Excuse me, I need to rephrase it. We presume to know what God uh, should do and we tell Him what He should do. Praise God. We need to move out in the will of God, not in presumption. We must not project our thoughts, our thoughts, and our will over ourselves or others. You know, people call in for prayer, and they say, send in your request. And you know, when they do that, they'll tell you what to pray for you can be praying for somebody in the prayer line to get to them, and before you can even start praying, I want you to pray for this, I want you to pray for that. You do. Well, you just stand there, I'm going somewhere. You, know. you do. That's presumption, telling God what to do. Rarely do you ever hear one, someone say, I want the will of God. I want you to pray that His kingdom come, His government come, and His will be done in this situation. We're afraid to pray that. But I'll tell you, if you'll pray, it's very liberating. It's very liberating when you pray, your will be done. Try it. Try praying that about everything. And see if it doesn't make a real difference. That doesn't mean, you know, okay, he said, giving it shall be given unto you, so I'm going to give so I get. We're not talking about pray as will be done so you still get what you want because you, you said the right things. I, was, I told you about going after uh, that piece of equipment. And on the way there, I went to check on something else, went down this highway. And probably because I went down that highway and also I stopped to get something to drink, I didn't get it. But anyway, I'm driving down through there and the Lord said, when you get there, this is what he spoke to me. When you get there, if I tell you don't get it, what are you going to do? Well, <laughs> what do we do? Throw a fit. I said, well, Lord, and it's so, I cannot tell you, it's one of the most expensive. Spiritual experiences I ever, I mean, the Holy Ghost came down in that truck. God touched me, and I, I was weeping. Well, I got there, and I pulled in the lot, and I went over there to look at the equipment. Well, while I'm looking at it, another man pulls in with a trailer. I didn't think anything about this, selling all kinds of stuff. So I started walking. He walked in right ahead of me, walked up to the counter, and bought it. Cash money. <laughs> what I went there to buy. I drove all the way on the other side of Winsboro by that. Oh, you know, I walked out, and the Lord reminded me of that encounter I had on the way there. He reminded me. <laughs> Praise God. A lot of people got mad and quit God because he didn't do what they wanted him to do. Let me say, let me ask you, if God doesn't do what you want him to do, are you still going to have a testimony? Are you? 
Praise God. Maybe that's why when we ask for people to testify, there's no testimonies. God's not doing what people want Him to do. Telling God what to do, oh my goodness, this is, is really, just think about that. Praise God. We must not project our thoughts and our will over ourselves or others, or the church, or God, or whatever. So they say, send in your request. And when you pray for someone, they someone again, they tell you what they want. They want to tell you what to pray for instead of waiting for a word from God. I was uh, trying to think, uh, I was in Wisconsin. And the Spirit of God really moved. Uh, before I ever preached, I, when I walked up there, I felt the, the, the mighty presence of God so strong in that place and I just waited on God and people just started standing and getting blessed and God was moving and then I felt after you know they kind of it settled down some I God impressed me called for people in prayer I called him up there the first one comes up there he starts this you know just rattling off his prayer and you I, I, I've got to the point where if you want to do that if you want me to pray for you you be quiet I'll pray for you if you want to pray then I'll go on let Pray for somebody that wants to be prayed for. Are y'all understanding that? I get agitated. I'll be. I'll. Be, I'll tell you the truth. Or you walk up to pray for them. They're, they're praying in tongues. It's so loud you can't. You can't pray for them. Different things. Okay. Sometimes they fall out on the floor, so you can't give them a word. And the Lord has directed me many times. Just get down on the floor and tell them what God has to say. You ain't getting away from me that easy. Okay. So, and I didn't know what to say. And then the Lord reminded me right there. He, reminded, he gave me a word. When Samuel came to Saul and Saul had disobeyed concerning the Amalekites. And Saul starts rattling off all this stuff. What Samuel say? He said, be still or be quiet and hear what God has to say. And so I said to the man very gently. I wasn't mean uh, hard. I said, brother, be quiet and hear what God has to say to you. I had to do that two or three times that morning for those people that I prayed for. I told you one of them. I told God is saying that you're doing, you, there's some things going on in your life God's not pleased with and you better get them right. He didn't tell me what. After church, he came to me and said, did God tell you what it was I'm doing? I said, no, he didn't tell me. He was relieved, you know. He's worried that God told me. Well, that's between him and God, and I told him that. Now, are they take up praying their self, as we said, for what they want, so you can't give them a word? What is that? Their soul, their self is in control. Re, uh, remaining in control. I, I just want to say this. If you will be sensitive and watch this, not that that's what our priority is, but when you see it, you, you have to, we're to discern, okay? If you'll discern, you'll discern that in all areas. Not just in people coming up for prayer. You'll discern it in the worship. You'll discern it in so many teaching. People are teaching, preaching. You'll discern that. You'll see that. It's not God talking through their mouth. It's their own soul. People want to know if we prayed for them. Did you pray for me? Answer, yes, I do. I do. I'm praying for you or I did. But you don't have to tell them, or you can, but not the way you want me to pray. I'm praying for you, but not the way you... I'm praying that God's will be done. No presumptuous prayers if, as if we know the will of God. God sometimes shows us what to say or do. As If we're praying for Him, or if we walk up to Him to pray. Many times, most of the time, uh, when I'm walking from one person to the next, the Lord already... I, I saw that in a dream. And the Lord's already telling me, I don't, before I even know sometimes who's the next person. Sometimes he doesn't tell me anything. And I can promise you I'm not going to manufacture something. God is not healing them because he, does, because he doesn't. Uh, we think he doesn't love us or love them. Well, God, you didn't heal them. But he's dealing with them or with us. By that affliction, we have to know that. Or that financial problem. Or that relational problem. Or that problem on the job. Or they lost their job. Whatever it is. And oh God, you know, we're praying that. He doesn't want to heal them yet. 
may never heal them. What, did, what does the psalm say? Before I was afflicted, I went astray. There's no way we can get away from the, the chastening of the Lord, Hebrews 12, the, the scourging, the discipline of the Lord, if we're His child. And one, I heard one pastor say, a very large church in New Orleans, God finally talked to him and said, every time I try to slap somebody, you get in the way. Now, I know that's kind of crude language, but you know, uh, uh, you know what that word scourges, every, when he receives, he scourges. Well, you know what that word means? It means beats. He beats him. Has it been beaten on you? That's not a bad thing. You know, my dad, my dad had no problem beating me. And later on, I wished that he had found out some other things I'd have done and beat that out of me. <laughs> you know, I wished he had them. Don't you want God? Don't we want God to beat out of us whatever needs to come out of us? Not, not if we, we want to do what we want to do and we want to run our life and we want to be in charge. I'll tell you what, go ahead and be in charge of your life and you won't end up where you want to end up. I'll promise you that. You will not end up where you want to end up if you're in charge. Praise God. Amen. I don't hear any amens. You've been quiet now. God's not a knob on a radio we can turn on and off, even for healing or a word from God. He's not a genie in the lamp. Rub him. He'll come out and say, what do you want? You can live with pain. Did you know that? You can live with pain. How many in here have pain sometimes? Nobody. Well, that's, oh, a few. <laughs> you get a little older and pain doesn't go away. You just keep going anyway, best you can. Uh, this pastor said uh, he had a problem, a physical problem, and God wasn't healing him. And In fact, when he had people pray for him, it got worse. And finally he said, Lord, I can't go... He, he flies, he drives, if it's a, depending on how far it is. Gone a lot, preach, said, God, I can't go preach anymore. I can't ride in a car, it hurts too bad. I can't fly, it hurts too bad. And God said, who said you can't? Who said you can't? Hear that tonight. Who said you can't? Well, I said I can't. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, he's caught me on that one now. I'm telling you, I, he's, he's been telling me that. Who said you can't? We were coming home from Mule Shoe, Texas, 500 miles, in a hot box, 45 miles average, and I uh, can't do this. <laughs> Who said you can't? <laughs> you just keep going. You just keep going. We left at 8.30 Friday afternoon, got here 1.30 Saturday afternoon. That's a long time on the road. Anyway, praise God. Who said you can't? Did God say you couldn't? You know what? We need to pray for the power of Christ to rest upon us. Now here, what do we pray? Lord, strengthen me. Lord, give me... Hear this. you got to hear this. Lord, give me strength. But what does the Scripture say? When I'm weak... Then I'm strong. Why? Did he give you strength? No. Because the power of Christ rests upon me. It's not that he needs to give us strength. We need to have more Christ. Are you seeing where the power is to come from and the strength? Oh God, I want you to give me this. I want you to give me that. But we're wanting it apart. Hear this. Apart from him. We want to have it apart from him. It says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. Why? Because the power of Christ rests upon me. Not, not that he gave me power. Not that he strengthened me. But Christ was in me. And I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. How does he strengthen us? By being in us. His power. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord. When people ask us to pray for the alleviation of something, is that God's will or their will? Oh, pray.
pray that I'll get this job. Oh, pray that I'll get that car. Oh, pray that I'll get that house. And we have needs. I'm not saying we don't have needs, folks. But I'm going to tell you, in every need we have, there's a will of God in that. There is a will of God. Let me ask you this. Had you rather live in a nice, comfortable home and not make heaven or live in a tent and make heaven? You say, well, I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be. Well, whatever it takes. Did we pray that? <laughs> whatever it takes to break this soulish, controlling self in us. It's going to have its own way. Rebellious. Mean-spirited. A very, very few people are going to make heaven. I'm, I'm going to tell you who's not going to make heaven. Self-willed people are not going to heaven. If they went there, they'd mess heaven up. Me, I've missed if that if that if I'm self-willed. You know what? God's already dealt with that, and He kicked him and a third of the angels out of heaven. He's not going to deal with it again. He dealt with it in the garden. Adam and Eve, he kicked them out. Not going to deal with that. Let's don't be in that line that gets kicked out because we're self-willed. Now, we will forever be going through something. I promise you. The Apostle Paul said, We are always delivered over to death for His name's sake, so that Christ may be manifested through our mortal bodies. We die daily. It's always going to be that way. Some think that any difficulty is evil, it's of the devil. But it, it, but it isn't if it's God's will. Well, I believe God just wants me to be happy. And God wants me prosperous. And God wants me to have stuff. And God wants me to go places. And God wants me, does he? I'll tell you what he wants. He wants Christ to reign and rule in our lives. That's what he wants. He wants us to grow up into Christ in all things. Christ be formed in us. That's what he's after. The only thing getting to heaven is his son. Those that are in the likeness, the character, the nature, the that are the same image as his son, the image that was lost in the garden. Now, ask the Lord. Ask the Lord. And by going through and overcoming, we will have authority in that area. Now, God could certainly give us deliverance, and sometimes he does. But he had rather give us maturity. Now, in that case, you say, well, I, I think that sounds too hard. But he said, he will not allow more to be put on us than what we're able to bear, but with every temptation that's test, trial, whatever, provide a way of escape. Uh, I'm telling you on the authority of the Word of God, it will never be too hard. It'll never be. Too hard for me and you, but not too hard for him in us. We're not saying if the enemy does something, uh, we fight that, that we should fight it. Or not fight it. We ask the will of God. Paul said that I might enter into his sufferings. That I might know him and his sufferings. Uh, there is a real, actual place in God where sufferings we can come to where we see that when we suffer, we get more Christ, and we want more Christ, and we embrace the suffering. Prayer. Now, that's not what you're going to hear in a needs-based church, a, a human man needs-based church. You're not going to hear that. God wants to bless you. Prayer. Some people, would they say, let's pray for unity. Let's pray for revival. You hear that? but orchestrated by who? God or man? Just, I, I know what I'm talking about. We need unity. Whose unity is it going to be? Whoever's, whoever's got the most power in that, in that group or that situation. That's whose going, unity it's going to be. You understand? We want a stadium full to start. A stadium full to start, but God begins with a seed. 
We can't, uh, we can't lure or make God move. We can't trick Him. We can't deceive Him. We can't threaten Him. can't bargain with Him. The soul. Now, some say, well, wait a minute. Jacob, when he was running from his brother Esau, he was laying there, had a rock for his pillow, stopped to sleep, had the vision of the ladder going to heaven, angels ascending, descending. He woke up and said, surely this was the house of God. I didn't know it. He was so overwhelmed, he said he made a commitment to God. If you bless me, I'll give you a tenth of everything I get. Now some say, well, didn't he bargain with God? No, he said, as you bless me, if you bless me, I'll give you a tenth of it. He's not saying you have to do it or I'm not. No, that's not what he's saying. Whether he gives to you or doesn't give to you. The soul can be a great cheerleader in religion. Power of the soul to stir people to human effort. I'm telling you, it's there. Power of the soul. Power of the soul to stimulate people. Or to simulate even conversion. Power of the soul. Tell people, oh, you're saved. But they, you know, but they're not saved. Uh, we were in a place, and this other speaker there, he, he said, all you that want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, you come up here. Well, in just a few minutes, he said, seven of them got filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to tell you something. I doubt it. I seriously doubt it. Because I, I know how that operates. There's a church in Arizona, a very large church. And they claim 100 to 120 people get filled with the Holy Spirit every Sunday night at that church. But I, I've, I've seen how they operate. They take them downstairs and they say, now we're going to count to three. When we get to three, you say whatever comes to your mind, but it can't be in your native language. And you just say whatever, whatever something comes to your mind, you'll be speaking in tongues. We can produce the counterfeit, but we must not want it. Are we weak? No, we're strong. Oh, that we would become weak to our own will. I'm going to tell you, the, the, the way to power with God is the way of weakness in us. Unless we become weak, we'll never become strong. He said He chose the weak things of the world. If you make yourself strong, then you eliminate yourself. I do. Weak in our, to our will, our soul, our strength. And you know what? When we become strong, then God becomes, and we become large, then God becomes small and weak in us. Are you, are you hearing what I'm saying? The stronger you are, the weaker God is in you. The bigger you are, the smaller God is in you. The best thing, if God loves us, and He said those He loves, He chases, best thing that God could do is knock that out of us. Just like He did out of Moses and many others. Prayer, preaching, teaching, worship must be directed by the Lord. Initiated by Him, sustained by Him. You know, many times a great revival will start and it begins to wane and men come in and try to sustain it themselves. When God's moving on, let's move on with Him. As long as we understand it, meaning as long as we know what and how to do it, it'll be us. We have to come to a place where we can honestly say, I don't know what to do. That's the best place to be. When you don't know what to do. And we turn to God. And we ask Him for His direction. His working in that thing. His will to be done. I'm very serious about what I'm saying right here. Very serious. God's got to get that out of us. Our self-will. God remains small when we understand. We know how. We know what. Never seen anything or anyone stumble or wander into the will of God. 
People are not going to wake up in heaven and say, Oh, look, how did I get here? I didn't know. I wasn't sure. We can't, uh, it can't get divine order with chaos. If it starts there, it remains there in chaos. Most churches or bodies of believers won't return to God and start over. The Tower of Babel, men build, but it'll never work. Causes confusion. The burden of the Lord, and that's what real prayer is, is the will or purpose of God. I, what would happen if a group of people, or even a, a handful of people, or just one person, really began to pray for the will of God to be done? What would happen? Instead of praying these selfish, soulish prayers. I'm not saying you can't ask God pray, but pray for the will of God. Just do that. What would happen if we began to pray that the kingdom of God would come in our home, in our nation, in our situation? What would happen? It's there, he said pray it, but we don't pray it. The burden of the Lord is the will or the purpose of God. And we should pray for it. It brings us up from minor things to the eternal will of God. The burden of the Lord in prayer. We don't want the Lord to give us too much leeway. Praise God. Many want you to fall into the will of their ministry, etc. There's a preacher we hear, our teacher, I don't say he's a preacher. He'd be going along and say, pray this after me, repeat this after me. I don't do it. I'm not going to do it. Small beginnings are not appreciated in the American church. And starting over is not appreciated. Bigness substituted for the anointing. But in Genesis 3, he says it's a seed that will curse Satan's head, not a stadium full of people. Oh, we're going to have a citywide crusade. We're going to take this thing. I don't know how many of you got the card in the mail today from a certain church uptown. Anybody? We got one. Christ did not come to bring peace but division. He said so. The reason they can have no unity is because Christ is not there. Not there. We can only be in unity, Acts 2, one accord, one place, if we all have one life, and that life is Christ. We're not brothers and sisters unless we all have that one life. You know, do these things for your brother, but not for everyone or those who are not your brother. He said, if you see your brother in need, your brother. That's very important that we hear that. Another place he said, teach those who are capable of teaching others. Don't be wasting your time or your resources. Not our natural family, but the children of God. False unity. Now, I'm not saying, you know, you're raising children. You need to take care of those children. Your wife, your husband, whatever. But a false unity benefits Antichrist, not Christ. Same about false prophets. False unity. Let us resist, not promote false unity. What we're going to see here in the end is a drive for unity between the faiths. The Muslims, the Christians, uh, Greek Orthodox, whoever. That's what we're already seeing. It, a drive for unity. Unity at all costs. If you don't fall in line in unity, they're going to deal with you. Following a leader without the voice of Christ in him is death. Do you hear Christ speaking through that person? Are they speaking about Christ? Are they giving you information or revelation? That doesn't mean it's always the revelation. See, let me say this. Nothing is unique with anyone. I'm not the source of anything and neither is anyone else. Christ is. It doesn't mean that we can't hear a good word from someone and, and spread that good word. That's not. It doesn't mean that. If it's revelation. 
but there's too much parroting of information. Now, is Christ directing you to do it? Christ is not divided. We need to ask, is Christ in it? We must discern His voice, not my pastor. what my pastor said, the TV preacher, the book, the Pope, denomination. The bride follows Christ, Revelation 14. This must be our entire life. We follow Christ. The bride knows her husband. And he knows his bride. There are prayers that don't even ask for God's will. Not just the words our Father, but a coming to Him. It's the, that prayer is not a formula. It's a, it's, it's a process. It, we, it's a coming to Him. Not to get an answer, folks, but to get His will, His will to be done. The best way to pray for people, that God give what He wants. And then if we'll pray that, let me tell you, the Holy Spirit will be all over it. He will. As long as we're praying for our will, then the Holy Spirit is not making intercession for us. Romans 8, 26-27. We're not in control. If we are, then the Holy Spirit is not. Praying for the coming of the kingdom of God, the will of God, into a person. Not praying for earthly kingdom, positioning, unity, blessing. When we pray for daily bread, that's in that prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. That's not just physical bread, but revelation. He gives seed to the sore, bread for the table. And the bread is His presence. He says so. It says so, and you can even see that in John chapter 6. We do not know how to pray as we ought. Again, Romans 8, 26, 27. But the Holy Spirit prays according to the what? Our will? No, the will of God. The will of God. That's how the Holy Spirit's praying. This is the only thing the Holy Spirit prays for is the will of God. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I'm just about right here at the end. We must pray. Father, your will be done in our soul. In our will, in our emotions, in our thoughts. I, I'm telling you, I, I, I have to do some hard things sometimes. And uh, I don't want my emotions, my thinking, and my will to get involved in it. That's a terrible thing. It's going to cause a lot of problems if we do that. I want His will. Is that what you want? His kingdom, His government. I want to be under His government, not under my government. We're to bring every thought into obedience to Christ. And who, who is and what is Christ? Christ is the will of God. He is the will of God. Praise God. Will you stand with me? Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. I, I don't know how this whole thing got to be about us instead of God. And I, when I say, uh, I'm not, you understand I'm talking generically and generally, not pointing at anybody. I, I don't know how this got to be about people instead of about God. I don't, do you, how do you, but that's, that's the norm. We're so self-centered and so about ourselves. What we want, how we feel, how we want to feel, what we want to have. May God deliver us from that. If He doesn't deliver us from it, we're in trouble. Amen? We are. There's no hope. That self-will, again, that self-will is what brought Lucifer down and brought Adam and Eve down and millions of others, self-will. Will you come and stand with you? We'll pray for you this afternoon if you if you allow us to. Praise God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father.